come you are in this uh, very nice uh, place and pleased that uh, you could make it to Bolzano, even if for some of you it was not such an easy ride. Uh, others that could not make it are connected and uh, will be able to follow our uh, first session uh, via Zoom. So my name is Jean Dussard from the European Commission, DG Research and Innovation, and I will have the pleasure to share together with uh, Nicola Pirone and Evangelos Gerasopoulos, my co fellow co-chairs, this first opening session dedicated to introducing the workshop and discuss the national geo coordination activities. Before inviting Dr. Psenner, the president of Iraq Research to step in, I would like to remind you that the meeting is recorded and we call to our online attendants to use the chat of Zoom if they want to raise a, a questions in the Q&A session. We will try to address them during the Q&A sessions. And of course, the presentation of this session will be shared a few days after the end of the workshop. Uh, we will, after the workshop as well in the coming weeks, prepare together with our colleagues of the Joint Research Center a, a report that will synthesize our debate and that we hope to bring forward to the attention of the whole community. So we believe that this edition of the Roger workshop takes place really at uh, the right uh, moment. You know that in five weeks uh, from now, uh, some of you will recommend uh, with us in Cape Town for the Geo Week, the first ministerial summit in uh, four years, the last edition having taken place already four years ago in Canberra, Australia. At that occasion, the Geo community and the ministers will endorse the post-2025 Geo strategy and the so-called Cape Town uh, Declaration. Those key documents, as you know, have been largely discussed and amended and I want to thank uh, the Rogeo community to have actively participated to those debates. I take as well the opportunity to recall you that ahead of this uh, ministerial uh, summit in, uh, in Cape Town, we have issued last week a call for expression of interest addressed to the entire Rogeo community, being the European members of uh, GEO, the countries, the participating organization, but as well the, the Copernicus uh, interested entities, the beneficiaries of uh, Horizon uh, Europe uh, uh, grants. So this, this call is really targeting all those people that believe that Europe should have a higher visibility in the, the geo. Um, the deadline is to, tonight. Why so short? Uh, we launch it on Wednesday because registration to the Geo Week are closing already on Friday. This was a requirement of the, of the local organizing and the security authorities of South Africa. So we have to act quickly. Not super urgent, I have to confess, for uh, your um, submissions uh, to have. Uh, e-posters, to have short presentation, to have videos, to be showcased on, on, on the boots, but very important for the ones that want to take advantage of the opportunity to send uh, some experts that would have difficulties in funding their trip to, uh, to Cape Town. Of course, we have to give priorities to low-income countries, especially our partners from from Africa. So I invite you to react very quickly. We have only a very limited number of, uh, of uh, grants available to sponsor those, those travels, but we really want to make the best use of it. Uh, you should have received, by the way, I think that uh, Erwin circulated to all the participants of this workshop, uh, this call for expression of, of interest. If you have trouble accessing the, the use of the tools, uh, just come to me at uh, the coffee break and I can help you figuring out how to do it. Let's look now at the, as well at those three days, uh, beyond those uh, three days, uh, we have to start thinking now in this uh, Roger workshop, what we want to do after Cape Town. There will be a, this will be a big celebration. We will be all very happy to, to endorse this uh, post-2025 strategy, to have to issue a declaration. But it's important as well to look at uh, how we want to translate this, uh, this strategy into 
uh, actions into an, an implementation uh, plans. And that's where I think that those three days here, and particularly on, on Wednesday, will be an important uh, uh, occasion to, to sit together to discuss what's the role of the regional geo, where do, you, where do we think that the national uh, uh, geo coordination mechanism can help making sure that Europe really gets the deserved visibility in, uh, in geo. The workshop as well is an occasion to discover the innovations and solutions that have been developed uh, within this uh, community and how additional and strengthened cooperation between partners, and you know it's one of the motto of Eurogeo, can be further enhanced. Let me now call Dr. Pseller to welcome you in this wonderful place. Dr. Pseller, please, the floor is yours. Thank you, Jean. Yeah, bon day, dit kans. This is uh, to say hello in Ladinian. Un caloroso benvenuto. Herzlich willkommen, ladies and gentlemen, and everybody in between and beyond. A warm welcome here at URAC for the EuroGeo workshop, which coordinates activities in Europe that contribute to the initiatives on the Group of Earth on Earth Observation, GEO and is co-organized jointly with the Open Earth Monitor Global Workshop 2023. Well, first of all, congratulations to your acronym, GEO. It's genial. As a biologist who studies flora, fungi, fauna, archaea, bacteria, I always looked with respect and awe to you who observe not just a few critters, but the whole Earth. However, I hope that the acronym I use, BIO, is also understood as well. Well, recently I came across uh, a quote of Hans uh, Joachim Schellenhuber. I have been on Friday, I've been in Potsdam, and he said in 99, uh, by referring to the satellite images and the computer generated um, simulations of Earth. He was talking about the second Copernican revolution, and I'm citing him. This new revolution will be, in a way, a reversal of the first. It will enable us to look back on our planet to perceive one single complex dissipative dynamic entity, far from thermodynamic equilibrium, the Earth system. Uh, now I learned from Alexander that your new strategy moves from Earth observation to Earth intelligence and shifts the focus from services to, to equity to bridge the global information gap. This year, the EuroGeo workshop provides the opportunity to position European activities in the light of the new GEO strategy and supports the coordination of actions at national and European level and across sectors and domains to create relevant and impactful contributions to GEO. So my question is, why do you meet here at URAC Research? Well, <clears throat> we are 650 people. We are doing research in 11 institutes and six centers from applied um, linguistics and minority rights to uh, renewable energy, regional development, biomedicine, emergency and mountain medicine, mummy studies, to name just a few, and of course, Earth observation. So your topic, the risk management and disaster prevention is embedded in a transdisciplinary research institution. For we all know that the multiple crises we are facing today cannot be tackled either by science or technology, but we have to keep in mind the concerns and the sorrows of the so-called normal people, the inhabitants of the Earth. GEO is now at a crossroad in defining its post-25 strategy. 
which is planned to be adopted in November this year, as we heard uh, at the Geo Ministerial Summit in Cape Town. So I wish you a fruitful meeting with lots of interactions, transdisciplinary discussions, and all the funny things in between and beyond. Good luck. Thank you, Roland. Now I would like to leave the floor to uh, Alexander Jacob. He's the vice head of the Institute for uh, Earth Observation at RISA Iraq Research and one of the key persons that helped us preparing this workshop. Alexander. Thank you very much, John. Hi, and welcome, everyone. I'm just standing here to really say that I'm happy that you all came here. We had a lot of doubts and fears that everyone makes it here to Bolzano. Not so easy to get here, but you see you manage it in good numbers, so we are very happy about this. I really want to thank the European Commission and also the CNR for helping us to organize this event here. Um, yeah, just wish you all a very nice time here in Bolzano. Hope you enjoy the event and very fruitful discussions. And also thanks, Roland, for this very nice introduction. So yeah, have a good day and start here. Thank you, Alexander. No. I will just call our uh, Deputy Director General of the European Commission at DG Research Innovation, Joanna Drake, to welcome us and say a few words. Thank you very much, John, uh, and thank you, Dr. Uh, Professor, and also Alexander. Um, a pleasure for me to be here. It's true that it's, uh, it's uh, quite a way to go, um, but it's nice to, you know, it's a nice journey. Um, and also you get to use planes, trains, automobiles, um, and also your feet, because you have to walk quite a bit as well. So it's, it's really lovely, and the weather is a bonus as well. So thank you very much for hosting us in this beautiful city and in this beautiful scenery. Um, like a month ago, um, at the last edition of the Euro Geo Workshop in Athens, um, I'm impressed to see that uh, the community has once again replied positively to this invitation to meet uh, in this region. Um, and I'm particularly thankful to our Italian colleagues from the CNR and the Iraq Research Center to have joined their forces to make this event a reality and grateful as well to my colleagues, of course, from the European Commission uh, to Jean, uh, to France, and to other colleagues who are all the time working together uh, in synergies in order to ensure that uh, we do have not only a visibility, but uh, a head-turning visibility as well in Europe, because I think um, we deserve it, and I think uh, we have the edge in so many ways, but we need to keep on showing the edge now uh, on the global stage. I thank also our colleagues from the European Commission's Research uh, Executive Agency also for having financed and helping uh, help to put together uh, a very exciting agenda. There are a few considerations. Jeanne has already outlined some of them um, on the why we are here. Um, and where we want to be, I think, in the coming years. And this is where um, what I just said about having to keep showing that um, we know what we want out of this. We can join the dots and we can keep using this um, area of knowledge and intelligence also to rope in our citizens to show that Europe is not only a Europe of values um, and of information and data, but it's also a caring one. In my speech last year, I emphasized the criticality of uh, the crises affecting us from various angles. Unfortunately, um, we witnessed in the last months uh, many disasters impacting the lives of thousands of people, being the wildfires in Greece or even the recent floods in, in Libya. But rather than falling into the climate change uh, catastrophism approach, let us see what we can do at our level to proceed with the actions and the concrete ones that we can take, of which we are taking many, 
um, but which maybe can also be more impactful and more understood and more supported even down to the level of citizens. And I see in this regard um, many driving forces that can actually converge to an epicenter. And one of them is the community, the other one is the framework and also the range of technologies and tools that we have at our disposal. If we start with the community, when we launched the EuroGeo initiative, only five years ago, by the way, um, there was a very deep understanding and vision of the value of establishing this strengthened European approach to leverage the impact of geo resourcing in Europe from regional to local scale. We wanted at the time to build upon the network, to promote further incubation, and also to ensure the scaling up of the most promising user-oriented services conducted at national or EU levels by the members of the European Geo Caucus. But we have reached a turning point now, and it is on each and every one of our shoulders to really reflect and to decide a way forward, come to a real concerted decision, but also to then carry the weight of that decision together. Perhaps before deciding where we want to be, I think we need to ask ourselves as well, looking back, have we progressed? Have we progressed on consolidating the national geo management structures across Europe? Have we managed to showcase enough the, benefit, the benefits of Earth observation to the European citizens? There's an election coming next year. And uh, I know that this might not be the front and center of information campaigns and propaganda campaigns and lobbying efforts by the MEPs, but I think it is up to us to put that into the narrative, because I think we do have a good story to tell. Um, the upcoming coordination and supporting action on the Eurogeo Secretariat represents a unique opportunity to debate on the future of the Eurogeo and to explore different models that could ensure its sustainability. We are limited in terms of time, and even more so in terms of budget. But I do count on you, and we at the Commission, we count on you and the whole community to join forces and support this project. The Wednesday debates this week will certainly help to identify the priorities for this action. So it is the space to watch and a space to occupy, and the space for us to be fruitful. The European Commission is certainly not stepping back. That is a reassurance that we would like to give you. We are ready to support you in the coming years and in particular in view of the remaining work program of Horizon Europe. Be aware as well that in less than two weeks, we will open the call on the pre-commercial procurement on customization, pre-operationalization -oper of prototypes and user activities in the area of climate change adaptation and mitigation. Very long-winded title, but the budget to support that is something serious as well. We're talking about serious money of 19 million euros in order to move forward along the value chain. There is a range of other Earth observation related topics in 2024 throughout the Horizon program that we have put together in a brochure that you can find on the registration desk. This summer, the five EU missions under Horizon Europe have confirmed in their activities as well that, and if you have not yet looked at the opportunities uh, that the four missions serving the European Green Deal, I kindly invite you to have a look and also come on board. I now move on to the framework, the second consideration uh, out of the three that I made at the beginning, and that's the GEO framework. 
what actually makes us quite distinctive or distinguishable from other communities is our very common engagement in GEO. GEO as well is at a turning point of its history. GEO as in the international organization uh, with its seat in Geneva. Many of you have helped imagining and putting on paper what GEO should do in the next 10 years and really thank you for that. The time will come, however, to translate the overarching principles formulated in the post-2025 strategy that we're about to approve in Cape Town in a coherent implementation plan. And by the way, this is really like yesterday that we already need to populate the plan with very concrete actions. We all know that the success of the initiative and its effective impact will depend on your active engagement as it has always been. And we would appreciate getting your views on how we, as EuroGEO, can support and shape the governance and the functioning of GEO. I think in a word, we need to be ready to jump into that framework and populate it with our European vision and European action plan. My last point is about the technologies and the tools, the toolbox in general. And of course, we all agree that these tools um, will not be needed unless they are impactful. And we have been debating for a number of years the future of GEOS. And it has been quite a recurring theme also in GEO itself. And whereas we as Europeans have always been the front line of its development, the question resonates still in the background as to its usefulness. It keeps boomeranging to us and contrasts with the multitude of platforms around the world. But let us remember that we should still look at user needs and also let us be realistic that we should not compete with large multi-million data platforms. We should ask ourselves, who are our users today? Who will they be tomorrow? And what GEOS services could we offer that the other platforms are unable or unwilling to deliver? What makes Europe a different entity with respect to the rest of the world? And how can we organize ourselves to serve the specific needs of that community? These are some of the questions that I hope will be discussed in the coming days and when preparing the next phases of GEO and EuroGEO. Just to conclude, I'm impressed by the <clears throat> incredible diversity of applications making the best use of our European, EO, uh, European Earth Observation assets. And this rich landscape puts us certainly in a privileged position with respect to the design of the post-25 geo. All I wish for you is uh, an excellent workshop and I also look forward to following your debates for the time I am still in Bolzano. Thank you so much for your attention and hopefully you will be providing us um, a very exciting um, vision, a very exciting set of actions and of course, a lot of replies to the questions for reflections that we set forward today. But we really do have the faith that that will happen. Thank you so much. Thank you, Joanna. Um, those very inspiring, uh, welcoming words. Um, well, since the launch of the Rogero Initiative uh, five, six years ago, but more correctly, I should say from the first Earth Observation Summit in Washington in 2003, the Joint Research Center of the European Commission has been a key actor of the development of the GEO Initiative and its commitment to, to con and is committed, sorry, to continue this adventure in the coming years. We have invited us with us, but unfortunately he couldn't uh, join uh, on site, the Deputy Director of Sustainable Resource uh, Directorate, Dr. Alan Belwart. Uh, Alan, do you hear us? You... I do indeed. Uh, I'll leave uh, you the, the floor. Thank you, Jean. Thank you. Thank you. 
Uh, yes, uh, I'm very, very sorry not to be with you in Bolzano, but in fact, I was lucky enough to be present at that first Earth Observation Summit uh, back in July 2003, and that's 20 years ago. And as Joanna just said, we, we do need to look back. And I think if you look back and you see what has been built in those 20 years, thanks to the national endeavors and the international coordination of uh, GEO and EuroGEO, we realized that, as you said in your opening, Raj, and we're at, a, at the right moment, I think we're also at a pivotal moment. Because of those building blocks of 20 years, we have a massive capability. We have a capability which 20 years ago was unimaginable. We do not need to trade off the space detail, the ge geospatial resolution for the time dimension. We can use both of them. Um, we do have the toolboxes, the know-how, uh, to analyze these enormous stacks of data, although we're only just beginning to scratch the surface of what we can do with artificial intelligence and machine learning and expert systems, we are getting there. And unfortunately, as has just been said, uh, the pivotal moment is now as well because the need has never been greater. You don't have to look further than the eight hottest years on record have all occurred in the past decade. So time is not on our side. I think what we're very much aware of in the Joint Research Center is that we are looking at connecting issues, we're looking at connecting policies, and we're looking at connections between some of the policy instruments that emerge from those. On the issues, take something simple as food, uh, food safety. If I eat it, is it going to nurture me or is it going to kill me? Uh, food security, if it isn't going to kill me, have I got secure access to it? Is there, are we going to produce enough? And food sustainability, are we going to produce enough in such a manner that my children and their children's children and their children's children will continue to be able to, to eat, drink and, and, and be merry? Biodiversity, biodiversity loss, climate change, as we said, pollution, all of these antagonize each other. They sometimes act in synergy, usually not. There's usually pressure between them, but those issues are all connecting and the policies that we're dealing with connect increasingly too. And in the last few years, we are having to face the nature restoration law, the climate law, the sustainable use of pesticides, Natura 2000, the soil monitoring law, the EU deforestation regulation, and the common agricultural policy, all bringing together their own observation needs, their own, uh, their own information needs. And, and we're addressing all of those in a, in a sort of connected way now. And then they, in turn, independently and together, feed the major instruments, the, the multilateral environmental agreements that we still see as, as a vital area where GEO, EuroGEO is making a, a really unique contribution. The, the Climate Change Convention, the Desertification Convention, the Biodiversity Convention, particularly those, the three Rio, but, but the others, Sendai and, and, and things like that too. Um, we've got the data, we've got the services, we're beginning to move to more and more common MMRV, this measurement, monitoring, reporting, and verification framework. And I think all of those policies I listed before, ultimately in the next few years, we'll see commonalities emerging between them where earth observation data can play an absolutely critical role. But in order to get there, we will not get there without shared standards, without trust and without transparency. And that's where GEO plays an absolutely crucial role and EuroGEO uh, as one of the, the fundamental elements of, of GEO, um, key to it all. JRC fully committed to the, to the process, to the principles, to the ethos. Um, we will continue with active support in fora like, like the one to which Unfortunately, I can't be there, but a lot of the colleagues are, thank goodness. Um, GeoGLAM, the Human Settlement Program, and the Knowledge Center on Earth Observation that we've recently launched, which is looking at particular relationships, as, as Joanna just said, between the users and what the actual user community is and, and what Earth observation data can deliver. As I've already said, I think the need is, is greater than ever. I would echo the sentiment that's just been made that it's not just the politicians and the scientific community. We also need to reach out to the public. And we have very powerful tools at our 
disposal to do that, but they have not always been at the top of the agenda, as, as Joanna just said. But I think it's something that we need to think about, and maybe that's something to debate in the, in the coming few days. I think the best way to do that, to reach them, is, is with unassailable knowledge and scientific evidence, and that's where what Eurogeo can deliver is, is profoundly powerful. And I think that the, these next few days will, will lead to deeper knowledge, they, they will lead to better evidence, and maybe even to echo the other speaker who mentioned Schellenbauer, maybe it will lead to, to a better understanding of Earth and its, its life support system. So I wish you all welcome, very sad not to be there. It's a wonderful place, and I'm sure that the work will be wonderful too. So back to you, Jean. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you very much, Alan. Uh, we will move to another uh, speaker that is even further away. Alan was not so far. His price, like for us by car. Uh, our next speaker, Dr. Roberto Formaro, is director of programs at the Italian Space Agency, ASI, and he will uh, connect uh, via Zoom. Roberto, ci puoi sentire? Can you hear us? Yes, yes. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, so uh, thank you. First of all, I would, I would like to um, thank the organiz organization of GEO to invite ASI uh, to give the, uh, in the during the opening uh, session of this important event. Um, on behalf of ASI, I would like to welcome all the participants to this important workshop which uh, uh, is an important step towards the strengthening of European participation to the GEO. Unfortunately, I cannot be there. I am uh, actually just landed in Baku. Uh, and uh, I'm very far, uh, but uh, Bolzani is a beautiful city and I hope that you will, uh, um, will appreciate uh, what it can uh, offer. It's a very, very beautiful city. Anyway, we are pleased to, do, to host this event here in Italy, there in Italy, uh, considering that happens in, uh, just before the upcoming uh, uh, geoministerial summit where the GEO post-2025 strategy and uh, relevant priorities shall be approved. Uh, it's my pleasure to confirm that ASI will continue to support and coordinate the effort uh, to implement such a strategy. We need it, and we will do our best to support it. Uh, ASI uh, in Italy and through ASI is strongly involved in ERTOS observation space applications. We have invested a lot of uh, uh, effort in the last decades, and uh, in particular uh, at ESA level, uh, and also at the national level. We are uh, developing uh, instrument missions. We push for the use of data for the development of institutional services and commercial application. We see that this is very important for our country, for Europe, for the world, for all the challenges that we have to face in the future, for environmental, uh, disasters for uh, uh, managing our uh, heritage, for uh, uh, su supporting the life of our citizens. So it's very, very important. It's uh, um, practically uh, supporting every, um, every moment of our life. So for us, it's very important to support and to push in this direction. So, uh, you will see this afternoon a lot of what we are doing in Italy to support uh, uh, applications and uh, um, services in the domain of earth observation. So also I would like to uh, thank uh, Nicola Perrone, is the geo principal uh, for Italy, for its uh, very important work in coordinating the Italian community uh, and facilitating the interaction uh, between the research community, the national agencies, various national agencies within this, there is also ASI, and uh, the commercial sector, and all the involved ministries. 
environment research and primarily, but uh, this is an area where all the all our institutions are strongly involved. So um, it's very, very effective for, for our country. So um, this is particular thank to him for the long work that has done in uh, in the last uh, in the last year, so uh, I would like to thank you again for the invitation. I wish you a fruitful workshop. Thank you. Thank you, Roberto. So this uh, closes uh, first part of uh, welcoming uh, speech. Uh, Let's give another round of applause to all our speakers that have so far done an excellent job. Thank you. So in the second part of uh, this session, we would like to discuss the national dimension of GEO. While we all know quite well the global GEO and its regional declination, uh, Rogeo, we really never get a chance to, to look closer and share our respective experience and more importantly, or the local and national arrangements articulate with the existing for a well-established like the Copernicus uh, Forum. Ahead of the Geo Week, the Geo Secretariat has been preparing an interesting uh, document to introduce to the Geo uh, Program Board for consultation. It's, it's a proposal for a strategy for national coordination mechanism. This document is not yet uh, public. It will be tabled and discussed uh, further at the at the Geo Plenary, and so you can expect to see it uh, as one of the plenary uh, documents released in the in the coming days. I will ask my co-chair Evangelos to briefly uh, introduce the main element of this strategy and how our respective experience in Europe, is, uh, as illustrated by the next presentations, can feed or influence this uh, draft strategy. Evangelos, up to you. Thank you, Jean. Okay, thank you. Good evening, everybody. So as Jean has pointed out, uh, GEO is uh, in preparation of, an, of a guidance of a strategy for national coordination mechanism in recognition of the importance that is going to play in the years to, to come. Um, a frame that aims to enhance uh, collaboration and coordination within a country between different stakeholders like governmental agencies, the private sector, of course, uh, different companies, NGOs, and the scientific community. And the end point of this is to deliver solutions to identify local challenges and problems, but also global agendas that the countries have to implement. And points within this strategy uh, is uh, things, issues like data integration and standardization and accessibility of data from the countries and the different agencies within, capacity development because each country is not at the same level. Uh, we're talking about interdisciplinary collaboration within the country, uh, but also within uh, GEO uh, and policy and decision support. These are the major. Uh, elements and of course at the end of the day how can you at the country level uh, achieve uh, or resources uh, mobilization to assist this uh, endeavor at the country level so as Jean said this document will come soon for consultation in the program board but I think the three days uh, event here in Bolzano should really be used in order to put some European flavor in this strategy and make sure that what is decided there is fully aligned with our vision. And some of those thoughts as we have been discussing in, uh, in Euro and Europe are uh, aligned here, for example, uh, let me uh, remind you that we are talking, everybody has been talking about a turning point, uh, about the pivoting stage that we are running into from uh, 2025 and uh, hence. So we are talking about a new transformative pro program for, for, for GEO. And uh, maybe the definition of transformative is not yet clear. We have to define it. By definitely, it means 
to think out of the box. It means that you bring all barriers uh, that are critical in order to make uh, the difference. And also within GEO, we have to think of the tools that will help uh, build such a transformative program. And I guess the national coordination mechanisms is one of those tools because at the end of the day, we have to have local impact. The impact that John and others have been talking about that uh, reaches really, really the citizen. So uh, also as Europeans, we have to guarantee that this, through this uh, strategy uh, principles that we in Europe want to uh, put in front, like for example, guarantee equity, guarantee the intergovernmental character of geo governance, et cetera, but also an efficient operational model will be incorporated in this mechanism or we will use the mechanism in order to assure these elements. Of course, there's not going to be one model for all, and these are the discussion, the, the, the presentations that we will be having from different countries. Uh, it needs to be a dynamical model. Uh, it needs to assist building a local ecosystem and all the elements that you see there. So these are the principles around which I think we should be focusing our discussions, and by Wednesday, we will have a, a concrete, uh, let's say, European position to put forward in the geo strategy for the national coordination mechanism. So thank you very much. Back to John. Uh, thank you, Evangelos. Uh, let's move to the first of our uh, speaker, the director of info, uh, no, the, the director, sorry, of Data Terra, Frederic Ewin. I'm not sure how to pronounce your name. I hope you can join us uh, online. Frédéric, do you hear us? Yeah. <clears throat> yes, I can hear you. Thank you very much. Excellent. Okay. Please go ahead. Yes. Okay. Now we see it, but not yet in presentation mode, if you can. Okay. Um, is it on presentation mode? Not yet in the lower lower right corner. Maybe you have to share another of your uh, open windows. Yeah, yeah. No, no it's fine. Please, just five minutes because we are already running a bit late. So sorry to constrain you from the beginning. Okay. Uh, you. So thank you very much. I will be very short. So and you can have the presentation. So thank you very much for 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 the invitation. And I'm really sorry not to be uh, to be with us. So and thank you for the opportunity to share the vision uh, of uh, uh, Data Terra research infrastructures. So in fact, uh, this research infrastructure is, is uh, confronted to the complexity of the Earth system and uh, how to uh, integrate different kinds of data from a different scale to understand the Earth system and uh, how you can uh, give to the scientists first and also to decision maker uh, an integrate way to access and to treat the, the information to answer to different, different challenges. Uh, Data Terra is uh, research infrastructures, so is uh, on the road of the of the different maps at national level and will be on at the European level next or in a few years with different other partners at European level. The idea is to uh, develop a global organization, not only to access to the data, but also to, to, to treat the information, to standardize the information and to build some product. Uh, from the need to the scientist and very near in terms of co-contrition with the with different scientists, but also open for uh, for public actors and also private actors. So this organization is a huge organization from uh, from France. You can see all the logos uh, and the different partners. We are, are organized uh, during the last uh, eight years and now completely operational during the last uh, three or, or four years around the uh, the data hub and also uh, transversal services. 
the positioning in Europe is a, a sort of uh, interface between uh, different uh, initiative organizations and that are contribute to, to those organizations, uh, yours, maybe also Destination Earth, and uh, and also really engaged in uh, in geo um, from from the beginning uh, through different institution, and now uh, this research African team can can organize and contribute. Uh, through EUROGEOs to that kind of uh, uh, international construction. You can see that uh, this is also a way to uh, have a, uh, simplify access to different uh, thematics in terms of complexity. And so you can have the different uh, data hub and also the fact that Data Terra uh, support the entire data cycle to promote quality richness of the of the information and use and reuse of those kind of information but it's also a contribution to the fair data and, serv and services processes you just an illustration of the of the, of the atmospheric hub, uh, da, uh, hub center i will not go into details but you can see uh, that from the, from all the data from spatial data in situ data but also from models you can derive different kind of information and give traceability and uh, easy to use uh, way to uh, to combine the information from for the scientists and other um, partners. This is the solid earth uh, data pool. Who can uh, with illustration on how you can use uh, Sentinel One, for example, or Sat Sentinel and other satellite to produce uh, different uh, deformation uh, services and so on. But it's completely. Uh, uh, dedicated to, to, to different users and on-demand services. Another ocean uh, dynamic data pool, I will not go into detail just for global information in that, and also on land surfaces uh, from uh, different thematics, uh, water, uh, biomass, and, and so on from all the uh, organization, scientific organization to uh, and partners with different kind of other partners. We have also uh, high resolution data access for, for free. Uh, we pay for that in our consortium and all this kind of information can be uh, com com complemented with the uh, Sentinel uh, product and, and quality of data, different resolution. So you can combine it, program it, and also to, to be near from the users to, to, to have a really concrete use of those kind of information. We built um, a, a national uh, distributed platform. Uh, I will not go into details, but you can, you can see that it's very, uh, a very important engagement of France, but also with a lot of connection in, at European level with different uh, partners. The idea is to give to the to 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 the users a sort of distributed uh, and transparent data access, connected, interconnected in very uh, important network between the different data center, HPC or thematic uh, producer, to uh, to be uh, to be used very concretely. So this is a list of uh, the, the list of different uh, uh, interface. I will uh, conclude to say uh, that from this approach, you can see different aspects of uh, problematics uh, for climate adaptation on, on different different scale. You can see some illustration. And as a, as a conclusion, because we don't have enough time and it is important to discuss, I think that uh, this investment can be uh, really uh, interesting to be shared by all the uh, Eurogeos uh, actors and maybe to, to push in the context of GEO through initiative or flagship that kind of vision and to, co to contribute in a long-term perspective to the access of the data and the real use that, uh, of this information for, for transition and uh, to be adapted to the, the, the different challenges. Thank you very much. Sorry for the for the delay. Uh, thank you, Frederic. Uh, please uh, stay with us because at the end of the 
of the, mm, the next representation, we will open the floor for a uh, question and answer and we will be uh, welcoming you uh, intervening or replying to so, some of, of them. Um, we see this as a very nice and interesting uh, example of uh, distributed uh, infrastructure that can certainly help us in our reflection on the direction of our, uh, that our geos infrastructure could take and which service would still need to be fulfilled by this uh, geos in infrastructure that are not served at national or, or regional uh, level. That shows as well the benefits of when a country has a strong national coordination mechanism in place. They can, uh, with all the actors, find some cons consistency and reduce fragmentation and uh, avoiding uh, duplications of efforts. Germany. Germany has always been an active member of GEO and being a large country with a federal uh, structure, they always have to innovate to secure coordination between the different uh, level of, uh, of uh, power. And so we are very long, uh, much uh, looking forward to hear um, them uh, sharing their experience. Uh, Jens uh, Dazenklok uh, from the DLR will give us uh, an overview of this organization. Jens, up to you. Right there. Thank you. Thank you, Jean. Um, can we have the slides, please? So I have a few minutes only to uh, give a little bit of insight into what we do in Germany. Um, when you look at these elements of German contributions to GEOS, you will see that's things we have been doing anyway. Um, so the point is more that we bring a geo perspective into, the, into it, uh, a perspective of coordination, data sharing and so on. So it's about infrastructure for earth observation, um, both in situ and the national EO program in, in the space domain. Of course, we contribute to European programs like Copernicus and others, and uh, we also contribute to international uh, organizations and programs. There are research and development programs, and there's cooperation for the economic development. And um, for GEO, when, when Germany decided to uh, support GEO, um, first of all, the task was given to the uh, BMDV, that's the Ministry for Digital and Transport, who's tasked with the national implementation of GEO and a national coordination structure was built as the DGO office, if you like, that's at, at DLR Space Agency, where I'm from. Um, we have a national implementation plan and a good link to a, st to a standing interministerial body for geo information, which is called IMAGI. Um, and so why do we do this? I won't go into all the details, but the main things are contributing to the success of geo and to achieving its goals and engaging national users and contributions to geo, but also to coordinate national interests uh, in earth observation and create visibility and opportunities for German activities at the global level. Um, the DGO working group consists of several ministries and uh, several agencies like the National Agency for Hydrology, for cart cartography and geodesy and so on, and also research, I haven't done this, also research institutes, can we have the slides again, please? Okay, thank you. Um, and actually in this group, we meet uh, three times a year. Um, we do it in, in, in meeting at, at changing host organizations. So we go into the different agencies um, to let them explain us what they do, what could be linked to GEO, what could be better linked to GEO. This is much about communication, about speaking, speaking about coordination and data sharing and how we can do better together. Um, and one thing we always talk about is how do we connect German data infrastructures? Um, the GDI, DE is the, is the geo data infrastructure in Germany. So how can we first of all connect all the metadata and data we have on the national level, there is a geoportal.de where we try to, to bring all this together so everything should be findable in this portal. And then in a second step, 
uh, the GEOS platform can harvest the metadata from this portal. So at least theoretically, all the data should be findable via the GEOS. Um, and by the way, there is also a development of a, digi a digital twin in Germany. Um, and there will be a presentation later this week or later in, in, in this workshop by Patrick Knöffel. Um, so maybe you want to go to this one. Um, now this is already the last slide. So what do we contribute to geo activities then? You've seen, I've talked quite a bit about national coordination, which is an important part. And now what do we do at the international level? First of all, of course, we participate in the, in the different committees and, and working groups. Then actually there are contributions from Germany to almost all the geo flagships, like the GIZ, the Agency for International Cooperation, hosts uh, the GOLDN secretariat and leads together with UNCCD, one of the subgroups. The Federal Ministry of Food and Agriculture supports program coordination and a sustained or a strategy for sustained organization of GeoGLAM. Then there's a Geoscience Institute, GFZ, that hosts a GFOI program office for RNI activities. That's about bringing in new sensors, new methodologies to do even better in GFOI. And also the IDIF Institute's host, a GeoBond Essential Biodiversity Variables portal um, in the GeoBond context. There are many more contributions, probably not all listed here. Um, and with this, I thank you and close my short insights. Thank you. Don't, don't leave. <laughs> Take a seat uh, because then we can discuss further. And I will invite as well the, the other uh, speaker, Evangelos and uh, Nicola Pirone, uh, to join here for the discussion. So we we'll go back to, um, to Evangelos uh, that will share with us the Greek experience and the benefits of uh, strong coordination between all the Earth observation actors in this country. Evangelos, five minutes. Five. Yeah, yeah, I'm reducing every when we progress. I'm not prepared for this. <laughs> but anyway, good, thanks. So France, Germany, coming soon, Italy. So we go to Greece, different size, so different needs, different coordination at the point. Uh, I can see the slides here. I'm waiting to be also on the screen, please. So as we said, there can be one model for all the countries, countries depending on their maturity, on their size and the current mechanisms actually should be selecting their own model to run EO coordination at national level. So how uh, we do it? How can I change this? Okay. So, um, there's a Greek geo office that was established back in 2007 to act as a national focal point that has a very specific mandate uh, as a permanent coordination mechanism at the national level to interface with the different Greek uh, agencies and uh, somehow inform strategic planning that is happening at the country, trying to build synergies at the country and regional uh, level and uh, in general try to pull resources within Greece and find opportunity for Greek EU researchers to raise their visibility. So there is a specific structure in order to achieve this that you see in the plot. And I'm going to be trying, uh, I'm going to try to give you some examples on, on how we are trying to, to achieve this. So the Greek G office uh, acts as an interface for different elements. For example, how uh, can we bring from my research and development or coordination action programs uh, some tangible benefit for, for the country and not leave the results, you know, stake on the paper. For example, we exploited the legacy and the opportunity that was given from us uh, through our planet and the uh, smart city earth observation or urban project to somehow influence the policy in geo and have uh, the resilient cities and human settlements 
as a fourth engagement priority, also exploiting the legacy and the tremendous work in the urban domain that has been happening from other projects uh, in uh, Europe, and uh, also this leading to the creation of the Urban Action Group in uh, Euro Geo. Uh, and there are many other examples from Greek coordinating programs, like, for example, the Geo project that started and then ended up as an initiative in different domain in the Geo uh, program or the Q project, again, that is relevant to the urban uh, element, uh, envelope. So another way around is getting a national priority or a national mandate and trying to bring it back to, to Geo. And this has been uh, in the domain of cultural and natural heritage when there was a Greek initiative that was uh, actually approved by uh, UN Secretariat uh, Gutierrez uh, in, nine, in nine, uh, 2019. So actually we tried to, to bring this interface within GEO and uh, uh, try to coordinate in a better way together with UNESCO World Heritage Center how we can use Earth observation in this uh, domain. And in the next uh, and last, uh, let's say, subdivision of the Greek GEO officer, which has to do with sustainable development goals, we have tried to bring all these trends and information uh, existing at the global level and bring it uh, into practice at the local level and also get the experience of the local implementation and bring it back to, to GEO and the local level. This has been done in clock collaboration with uh, the EO for SDG uh, toolkit, but the thing here is that also we have tried to approach different communities. For example, the Greeks, uh, my colleagues are uh, part of the Greek delegation under the Earth Observation domain within UNGGM Europe. So we are actually trying to help to, to make the bridge between the statisticians and the Earth Observation. And also lately with the Sustainable Development Solution Network, which are people doing the socioeconomic analysis of uh, SDGs, etc. And we're, again, we're trying to find common ground to, to, to collaborate. In, in this latter thing, we have managed to uh, secure some resources for a national flagship program. So the title of the program is Resilience, Inclusion and Development Towards a Just Green and Digital Transition for Greek Regions. So you understand the project, the, the, the concept behind is to support the Green Deal in Greece, but we have managed to put Earth Observation as on one of the main uh, tools in order to, to make the visualization and give this geospatial uh, character dimension in, in the way we show things. And there have been other projects like the Chaos Project, which has been done uh, in the umbrella of the European Space Agency in collaboration with Hellenic Statistics, already achieving the uh, visualization of some indicators. And the intention is also to get the EO toolkit and uh, see how we can start implementing at national uh, level. Also, part of the intention of the Greek Geo uh, Office is to bring new players uh, in Greece into EO projects. So, for example, we exploited the IFL project to bring experts in buildings energy efficiency. We all know very well how important uh, is energy efficiency in order to uh, achieve the targets of a green deal. But those guys, they are mostly engineers that are, do not really uh, understand what is earth observation. So we managed to produce some very tangible outcomes out of these, like uh, what you see there, the actual energy consumption or the carbon uh, emissions, like uh, a matrix of mitigation, or at the end of the day, the, the, the performance of, of the buildings in a specific uh, pilot. And I think this is very important. And now we are working also together with European Environmental Agency to see the upscalability of an uh, activity like uh, that. Also, we try to mobilize a community coming from the natural language processing uh, and based cognitive search. So these are companies and uh, university uh, colleagues working on this element. And we try to introduce them you know, in, in the era area of, uh, of geos and uh, now these colleagues are in working relationship with uh, our colleagues uh, from uh, gpb plus and, and trying to figure out what contribution they can make to this uh, european uh, contribution the, 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 the geo platform and other uh, projects like for example bringing in experts in low cost sensors for harsh conditions like remote and represented uh, area. So all in all, we are trying to mobilize, uh, you know, the Greek community and bring them closer to GEO and EO in any way, you know, to, to give them more opportunities for funding and uh, continue what uh, they are doing. 
So there are many, many other, uh, you know, uh, activities. I think last year we had a chance to give you more details about what we are doing in Greece and we know very well. So the next steps that we need is to continuously develop a broad, dynamic stakeholder ecosystem. This is very important uh, for us. It's not just us, the EU community in Greece. We need really to engage in a multidisciplinary way with other stakeholders and especially build systematic links with uh, different authorities, the ministries, governmental agencies, uh, and see how we can really serve their uh, needs. We are tracking uh, the, the maturity and the progress that we are doing at the country level. The plan is to be using this Yomi tool that we have uh, developed in the ESIP uh, project, and Greece was one of those countries that have implemented it. Uh, and also try to push for some mandate and some legal basis for EU incorporation at the national level because, you know, we are reaching agencies and they say we don't have legal frame in order to make authoritative uh, the use of uh, observation. And of course, at the end of the day, which is probably a common problem or issue for all national coordination mechanisms is to mobilize resources in order to support further this coordination and effort that we are taking at the uh, national level. So I think that was it and thank you very much. Thank you, Evangelos. Uh, let's go to our last presentation with uh, Nicola Pirone from uh, GNR, and he will uh, show us uh, how Italy is organized uh, to coordinate its geo activities. Thank you, Jean. Good afternoon to everyone. So, uh, my goal was is to show the landscape of uh, Italian participation to geo science. It's, uh, inception that uh, is almost 20 years now and uh, so you can if i can have the first slide i don't see it can i ah okay so uh, just uh, I, I will i will go very quick on the various uh, slides but uh, my goal was really to show the larger community of Italian institution involved in, uh, in GEO. So first of all, the competent ministry is the Minister of Research and Minister of Environment, with which we are very much involved. And uh, we have the large participation of several research institutions that you see listed here, but also the private sector in the last 15 years has been playing also a key role. We have been uh, structured our strategy and our participation following the triple crisis that you we know that uh, climate change pollution by diversity loss but also having in mind that the four engagement priority that has been driving uh, the geo work plan in the last 10 years so what we have done here is really to make sure that uh, all institutions were contributing to different goals of a geo in the work program so we have been participating to several flagship, to most of the geo initiatives and so on. And uh, we've been quite successful because thanks to the European Commission uh, funding scheme, you know, from seven, seven framework program to today, we have been working involved in the coordination of participation of, of a several European project that you see listed here. And we have uh, quite uh, a good number of uh, ongoing activity uh, in, 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 uh, right now. And so what I will do now is really to give you a flavor of what uh, have, the, have been the major uh, activity of a key institution. So for example, INGV with Stefano Salvi is coordinating the Geohazard Supersite and Natural Laboratory Initiative that is uh, one of the key, since 2010, one of the key uh, uh, geo initiative uh, uh, in, in the work program. So several institutions involved, or most of the space agency. Then another important fact that was the, the support of the implementation of the Minamata Convention through the flagship uh, Goose Forum that we have been supporting since its uh, ratification since 2013. Then uh, another important initiative was is carried out by uh, ISPRA, is the environmental agency in Italy, by Giuseppe del Monaco, Pan African Geo Phase Two. This is very important initiative because it's a lot of capacity building training with the different African countries. So that is a very good example on mineral that is focused on the governance of mineral 
resources and the sustainable exploitation of these uh, resources. Then uh, we have also lately uh, uh, important activity that has been developed in several uh, European projects uh, concerning the, the, uh, the, the land degradation and the, the impact of climate uh, uh, change on, on ecosystem. Then we keep continuing to support the global health initiative through the new asphalt infrastructure that is uh, uh, IRENE, that is coordinated by the Masaryk University, that involves 70 national hubs. And also in Italy, what we are doing is the national hub with the Italian Space Agency, National Institute of Health. And this is meant to sponsor, to feed the exposition research to link uh, environmental pollution with impact on, on human health that uh, do not depend by genetic uh, uh, genetic factors. And then keep going, with, uh, very important in the, in the uh, project is great, that is, the, is meant to develop the Green Deal data space. That uh, is, is a very important initiative that uh, is really focused on three important uh, action that is biodiversity strategy, zero pollution action plan, and the climate change adaption strategy. So our colleague Paolo Mazzetti will talk more about this on Tuesday, so in the session in the afternoon. So, and then keep going still to develop infrastructure. We are, since the beginning, almost the beginning of GEO, we have been supporting the development of a GEO's platform to our uh, Discovery Access Broker. So this effort is, uh, is uh, moving along in the framework of different uh, projects that uh, our colleagues are, are carrying out together in different uh, framework in cooperation with the European uh, scientific community. And then, uh, we have also a lot of effort in, in uh, to map invasive species. So with climate change, the invasive species issues is a very important topic and uh, also the carbon cycle and the restoration of ecosystem. And then we keep going uh, also with uh, Antonello Provenzale involved in several European uh, project and effort to evaluate the critical zone dynamics. This is uh, through combining measurements and modeling. And also another important topic for the Mediterranean area is the wildfires and droughts that, as we know, in the last few years, uh, this, uh, this uh, issues has been uh, very critical for South uh, Europe, but not only for that. And uh, then we have also, we have seen the big uh, issues that lately has been investing in several parts of uh, Europe, including Italy, but uh, uh, in terms of flooding, so development of a system, alert system, and also to support authority to take a decision to manage this extreme event of a precipitation. And then another important uh, thing that we are moving now that, uh, as you know, one of the scope of this meeting is to discuss the future Eurogeo Secretariat that will be coordinated by our colleague Thierry ranking and we will discuss this on Wednesday. So as a CNR, we are very happy and proud to be part of this effort. Then uh, another important uh, uh, initiative that Italy has been uh, supporting since the last two years is the development of this uh, European uh, Horizon Europe uh, um, partnership on agriculture of data. And so we've been uh, discussing also this morning in the action group, I was late in the meeting, but uh, we are in the process of putting together uh, a proposal to form the partnership. This will keep us busy for the next seven years and will be a quite uh, important uh, initiative in the framework of a future Eurogeo uh, initiative. So we are doing uh, all the national coordination. So and then we have an uh, Italian space agency that as you have heard this morning in the op uh, early this afternoon in the opening from the Roberto Fornaro has put in a lot of effort in terms of a new satellite mission. So putting, uh, we linked the Prisma data catalog to the GEOS platform and also working on uh, linking uh, air pollution with impact on human, so human exposure and to use satellite data to calculate the near ground concentration of major atmospheric pollutant. 
So this is really a very important initiative that ASI is sponsoring. Then we have the private sector. One of the scope of Geo Italy is really to merge, to link, to foster the cooperation between research sector and the private sector, because we need to really to work on the data value chain. This cannot be done without the contribution of the private sector, as we have been discussing several times in the context of Geo. So EGEOS is a large company in Italy working on different uh, topics that goes from uh, agricultural sustainability, environmental sustainability, resilience uh, and risk management, and uh, emergency response. So all these ready to go system that support local authority to face all this emergency. And uh, of course, they, they offer uh, online services, as you can see here, 24 hours a day, and uh, involving uh, uh, more than 40 uh, expert operators, supporting 40 plus countries. Uh, so a lot of effort, a lot of investment in this respect. And then we have also Latitude 40 that uh, develops this uh, urban data analytical platform. As we have seen, urban area is the fourth engagement priority in the geo scheme. And also this will be a priority also in the, in the post-25 strategy. So really this company is developing this uh, ready-to-go platform that can support local authority to evaluate a different scenario of implementation in order to achieve the zero carbon by 2030. And uh, so moving forward, we have another important example of a data brokering system. So we have a lot of data that very often are not known, are not discoverable. And uh, so we have a private company like Mio that is working on this in different thematic domains. So from air quality to cultural heritage and uh, climate risk. So they, they work on different projects. So they have been involved in different uh, European projects, which is uh, very important in terms of, uh, of, uh, of uh, um, making sure that the, all the prototype developed at the research level may have a commercialization output as well. So and then the Planet Tech is a large company in Italy. You will hear more in the, in the afternoon session, just uh, in the uh, ASI session that they, they, they work on, on downstream services, providing very important services for local authority on different topics, like from marine, safe land, and also alert system and uh, aquaculture. So just to conclude, this is the last slide. What we do, we will consolidate certainly the governance of Geo Italy, we will revise the governance on the base of a post-25 strategy. So after the ministerial meeting, we will convene a national meeting just to discuss with all, all interested parties. We will actively contribute to build the Eurogeo Secretariat and to announce national coordination mechanisms that were mentioned already by Evangelos just uh, earlier. Then we will we plan to contribute to increase the engagement of the private sector in GEO and also our expectation, certainly to reinforce the European capacity to strengthen earth observation value chain that through a co-design approach should ensure earth observation product and services fit for purposes to improve the policymaking process, increased social benefit and equity are expected. So we all think, we think that the meaning of earth intelligence is really this. So in order to make sure that all what we do will help to improve the social benefit and equity for all. Thank you. Thank you, Nicola. Um, so four countries, four different approach. Is there a need for some convergence in those approach? Or do you believe we should not be so prescriptive and leave it up to each uh, geo member to organize itself? Maybe this is just a seed questions to launch the, the debate. Unfortunately, very short uh, debate. But before uh, looking at the audience, uh, we should check as well on uh, slide uh, on the Zoom, on the chat, were there any questions raised? No? OK. 
Okay, then uh, questions for our speaker? Yes. yes, if I may. Yes, Hans. Actually, I have many questions, but probably because of time, I can only ask a few and we discuss the others then on Wednesday. But if Frederick still is online, I was a bit wondering if he could explain a bit or elaborate just a bit how this really nice activities that he presented are linked and complementary to Copernicus on the one hand and Geo on the other hand. Frederic, are you still online with us? Yes. No. <laughs> Yes, I'm, I'm online. Ah, yeah, okay, okay, yeah, please. Did you hear the questions? No? No, I don't hear the question. Can you repeat, excuse me? Yes. So uh, Franz uh, Himmler, a colleague of mine, was asking, uh, how do you see the interactions? How do you ensure that there are no duplication of efforts between on, on, what side, on one side what is uh, developed at uh, the level of the Copernicus uh, program and on the other side? With respect to the the geos infrastructure, how do you ensure uh, complementarities? Yes, uh, from the the Copernicus services, we are uh, we contribute to the different services. For example, from uh, from uh, climate services and marine services through our data pool. So our data and product uh, from LED aspect contribute to the Copernicus services. For Data Terra, we are not involved in uh, operational uh, data services. We are more at the level of um, research and development services. And to be operational, we will be uh, partners with the other organizations, such as um, um, Ocean with uh, different Copernicus uh, uh, services. So there is no duplication, duplication of effort, but more reinforce uh, the information in terms of quality of data that can be that can be validated by the different communities. And uh, with the geo platform as well, we are discussing a lot with the different uh, partners to be sure that our standard and the tools can be shared and reused. Uh, so the idea is that to not duplicate the effort. We don't have enough um, potential for that. Okay, thank you, Frédéric. Any questions from the audience to our distinguished speakers? Yeah, Mark? <laughs> yes, thanks, and thanks very much to all the speakers. Um, one thing that I find quite interesting, uh, which I think I heard in most of the presentations, although um, some put more emphasis on it, Jens in particular put a lot of emphasis on this, which is the um, the kind of inter-ministerial um, characteristics or efforts, let's say, in these national geo uh, activities. And to me, this is something that is... So is very good that we're seeing this across many of the European uh, um, uh, member states. But my question is, how, how do we take even further advantage of this? So how, um, I mean, one thing that came to mind is, can we come up with a, a standard approach to gathering needs and requirements across all these? I mean, there's always a lead ministry, and then there are other ministries that are, in the Italian case, there are two lead ministries, but normally there's a set of, of lead ministries and then others that are kind of coming in and expressing additional needs or requirements. And Jens explain, explain this kind of tour that they do to different uh, labs and ministries to, to, to get this feedback. I think what would be really useful would be if we could come up with a standardized way across all of the European uh, member states to collect requirements from these different uh, policy and decision-making users. Uh, would, you, would you see this as useful as well? And, and can, can you think of any way that we could do that? Thanks. Thank you, Mark. Uh, you take one minute each, not more. <laughs> so we... Can you hear? I don't know if that works. But uh, yeah, this is a very important question. And uh, 
let me answer the first that, that I don't think it's uh, it's easy and straightforward harmonization, as you ask, because the situation in every country, at least I can talk for the Italian country, you know, when we talk about uh, uh, instrument, you know, health intelligence means to support with the tools, better decision in the policy making process to improve it. But the different uh, in the countries, there are different actors, depending what type of policy we are talking about, because certain European directives are of a competence of a certain ministries and the global treaties are competence of a different ministry. So I reported, for example, Minister of Research, because most of the research institution contributing to GEO are controlled by this ministry. But the directive and the protocol of environmental aspect, like you know, climate and uh, pollution and uh, so forth, are, are uh, uh, of competence of a Minister of Environment. But also in all this, when you do negotiation and implementation of directive and uh, also of uh, uh, international protocol, there are new actors that get into the play, like Minister of Foreign Affairs, Minister of Treasure, so because you talk always about money. And uh, so it's really a very complex decision-making scheme. And I think this is different in every country. We, don't, we have not harmonized this yet. So that's why National Geo have the have the, 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 the function of national geo is really to bring up the need at national scale depending on the national structure of the decision making process. Yes, can you hear me? Yes, works. Um, that's definitely one of the one of the challenges, right? And I mean, geo is is about breaking up silos and not doing everything everywhere. Um, alone and um, first of all, I mean, being being a partner in Geo first of all means to bring the messages home, and I think in Germany it was the implementation plan that was discussed in this ministerial group um, and and uh, decided on uh, or endorsed in this ministerial group, and that is the basis for doing the work afterwards and really uh, trying to to bring actors together in the Earth observation domain. Um, and everyone understands it's a benefit if, if you do that. Um, like Nicola is saying, I'm not sure if this is something we can harmonize across Europe. Not sure because of the different situations, but definitely it's a it's a point to look at in each of the each of the countries, I guess. Thank you, Jens. Evangelos. Yeah, uh, very very short. Uh, I agree this is a difficult task. If the ministries are not talking to each other already, I don't think the national coordination mechanism is the solution to this. However, that's why I put much emphasis on the ecosystem building at the country level. And if we are ready to give some very straight and clear messages that we can really deliver tangible solutions uh, ready to be uptaken for within the workflows, I think sooner or later they will understand and they will come on board. And when this happens within the frame of an ecosystem, then they will start talking to each other, uh, each other and duplication and stuff like that, like that will be avoided. Very good example, we approached the Hellenic statistics. Initially, that was at the theoretical stage. We showed the potential of Earth observation. And when the mandate came to them, and when uh, they made, uh, they understood well that there is an innovation part within the mandate, which can be really achieved using Earth observation, then they got really engaged. And then ministries around the different thematics really joined in. So with a healthy ecosystem, I think we can start you know, targeting something.